Welcome. This is an example to practice more uh, how to calculate the deformations or twisting angles in a transmission system. Uh, so we have here two shafts, AB and uh, DG. Um, they have two uh, load moments or torques, uh, 80 pound foot at H and uh, 40 pound foot at, at uh, F. We know uh, the material of uh, both shafts, so they are made of uh, A36 uh, steel uh, with this uh, G shear modulus, and both shafts are one inch diameter. Uh, one thing we know is also D is fixed, so uh, it's representing kind of uh, the the the. Uh, it's, it, the transmission is engaged at this part, so this is outside of the transmission system, but we're representing just before the movement that this point D is fixed. And uh, the whole system, the two shafts here, are also supported by bearings at A, B, and C. And these bearings kind of uh, prevent the translational movement, uh, horizontal and vertical. Uh, but they allow free rotation of uh, the shafts. So there is no, the bottom line here, there is no uh, torque reaction at A, B, and C, but support D is fixed, so you expect to have a support uh, torque reaction at uh, D. Uh, now, what's really the question here uh, about? It's about determining... Um, the angle of twist of point B, so which is the edge of AB shaft. Um, so we are interested to calculate here what's really this end uh, is, how much is the twisting happening there? Uh, and to be able to answer any twisting angle question or calculations at any point within a, a transmission system, you first need to find the internal torque uh, values at the different segments of uh, the shafts in and this transmission system. So this is our first goal here is to first draw the free body diagrams of the two shafts we have here and try to uh, analyze the equilibrium and draw the uh, torque diagrams. So we know you have th this information so you will actually do the actual thing needed here which is finding uh, theta b. So by drawing the free body diagram, I'll take apart this system by drawing the two shafts uh, separately, um, drawing the loads at H and F, uh, and showing the dimensions of different points here. And if I start with uh, shaft uh, AB, because it's the one that has that's dependent on or supported by DG. So I start with the kind of the loose end of that system, which is the the uh, shaft that's dependent on the other one. So AB here is our starting point. And if you look here, uh, AB, the force uh, torque here of 40 uh, pound uh, feet is applied at F, uh, and uh, the gear E is supported by gear G. And gear E will try to move, but gear G is preventing it. Uh, so there is a force reaction from G on E. And that force reaction is the same force that gear E is applying in G trying to move, right? Uh, so one thing to note here, which we kind of used to figure out the gear ratio and prove that formula for the gear ratio, is that the, f the tooth fourth, so the force from the tooth, or the interface or interaction between the two gears, Fe and Fg are equal. But they're causing two different torque values because the radius of E uh, gear and gear G are different. Uh, so it's important to be able to visualize and understand the direction of forces, uh, the loads, and also the reactions of at the gear tooth. Uh, and then trying to, if you look here at force Fe, uh, it will cause a torque Te that's clockwise, and it's countering the load at F, which is counterclockwise. So the, this is important to put the directions right so it will make your life easier when you do equilibrium. And when you reflect this Fe as Fg, which is equal, 
magnitude, but now it's applied on G, uh, gear G, it causes a load now torque TG on that shaft D H C G shaft. So that's kind of a first step is to handle shaft AB, figure out what's really holding it from rotating with the torque, the 40 pound foot torque, and reflecting kind of putting that reaction torque or resisting torque, reflecting that on the other gear. And that's where we stopped right now. And then the question is, this torque G with the 80 pound foot applied on point H, now this shaft, the second one, DHCG shaft, uh, it's fixed at D, so there is a reaction torque at D. The question is, what's the direction of that? I will assume it to be clockwise. Uh, 40 pound foot, that's the kind of it will be transmitted to the bigger shaft. Uh, it's opposite to 80. So I assume that the net will be uh, uh, in the same direction as 80. So the reaction will be opposite to that net. So it will be uh, clockwise. It doesn't matter which direction you assume TD, or the reaction at D. Uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, your calculations will correct you. If it is not the correct direction that you assumed, the answer will be negative. So I'm assuming it here and see what, what answer we will get. So if you look at shaft A, B, uh, it's a very simple equilibrium. You will find that the 48 pound uh, foot is resisted by uh, the, the TE uh, torque at uh, the gear E, and TE will equal to uh, this uh, load of 40 pound foot. If I move to the other shaft, uh, I'm trying to do the equilibrium, but I don't know the value of TG, and I don't know the value of TD. So I have two unknowns, but do I really lack Two, un, uh, two values here, or, two, or do I have really two unknowns here? If you look closely, there is a relationship I know between TG and T. So before doing the equilibrium, I actually can figure out the value of TG through uh, the gear ratio. So TG is dependent on TE with the gear ratio of RG over RE. And if we look here, our RE is 4 inch and RG is 6 inch. So when I plug in the values, I will end up with 60 pound foot makes sense because the radius of the gear G is bigger than radius of gear 4, so uh, gear E. So it's like uh, you're increasing your torque from the first shaft to the second shaft by 50%. And of course we know power is transmitted assuming that uh, there is zero losses. So if you increase the torque, the frequency decreases. So the gear G here, yes, it has higher torque now, but its frequency or speed of rotation is less. Uh, so moving on now to the equilibrium of the second shaft, I can do that now. I have one unknown only, which is TD. And if I assume my positive direction to be an arrow going out of uh, the G uh, end and using the right hand to figure out the positive direction of the torque, uh, so you will find that here TD is negative based on that direction that I assumed. And you'll find it now as an answer it's positive value, positive 20. So the, the, the direction I assumed is correct. Uh, the direction that TD will be uh, clockwise. So now if I use this information to draw the internal uh, torque diagram uh, for the shafts I have. The first shaft AB is simple. Uh, the, uh, the part that's AF, this, this segment AF, doesn't have really any action into it, right? And the also the part EB, no action into it. The only action is the 40 at F, that's countered by 40 TE, uh, which is the torque at E. Uh, and and the, the, the only segment of the shaft AB that's really feeling the torque is between F and E. Segment AF and segment EB doesn't really feel any torque, so I didn't really need to draw the internal torque diagram for shaft AB. What I'm drawing now is for shaft uh, DHCG. Um, so I'm having a support at D, a load at H, and also kind of a load at G, which is transferred from shaft AB. And the problem, the question is, should I start drawing the diagram from D or from G? If I use the positive direction in the sum of the torques uh, shown here to be 
going out of G, this is the direction positive for figuring out the direction of the positive torque, I will start from G. So I'll start from the right. Uh, G, there is TG, and TG here is clockwise, and my positive direction, uh, direction is counterclockwise. So I will have a drop by 60 pound foot uh, because of TG, and there, is no, there are no moments between G and H, so I'll move straight, horizontal, until I hit the 80 pound foot uh, torque at H. This one is counterclockwise, so it is positive. So it's causing a jump from negative 60 to positive 20. And then when I go straight to the support at D, TD, TD is 20 pound foot, but its direction based on my positive is considered a negative value. So when I add negative 20 to the 20 that I had from point H moving into D, now I'll move this, the value will be 20 minus 20, that will bring me to equilibrium zero at D, which is kind of, I should have a, uh, you know, uh, smiley face here, happy face, because once you hit zero at the other end of the shaft, this is a good news, your equilibrium is correct. Uh, so if we represent now the torques at different segments, because these segments are representing homogeneous case of applying the uh, uh, twisting angle formula. So now uh, TDH, is representing the torque between uh, in, in segment DH and uh, HG segment will have THG. So uh, continuing now with uh, trying to figure out really what's theta B. We all what we did is figuring out the uh, internal torques within the different segments of the shafts. But if I look at theta B. Uh, to like we learned before to figure out theta or angle of twist of a part of a, a shaft try to relate it to a fixed part of that shaft so the only fixed point in this transmission system is point D so phi B would equal to phi B relative to D if I want to move now from B trace the deformation all the way to D this is what I'm gonna do now so phi B D is equal to phi BE, so the torsion or twisting from B to point uh, E, or the gear E, plus whatever this gear E is twisting because of the twisting of gear G, which is caused by the twisting of shaft DG. So I'll represent all of that, just hold this whole story here, by just phi E. I don't know yet phi E, but I'll break it down in a minute. So now phi B is equal to the twisting that happened in segment BE, plus whatever displacement, rotational displacement, that happened for gear E. Now if you look, phi B E is, the formula is always phi is equal to T L over J G. Now there is no torque internally in segment B E. So I can say that phi B E is actually zero. So whatever rotation that happens to gear E, will be the same rotation that's filled by B. So it's kind of the, this pen here, if I rotate my hand and I'm not causing any rotation in the middle of that length, this point here will rotate with my hand. This whole part of the shaft will rotate as it is. So there is no deformation in the segment uh, BE, but the rotation of point B is caused by deformations happening in other parts of the transmission system. So the question turns out to be phi B is the, is the twisting or rotation of the gear E. Question is what is really the rotation that's causing or caused by uh, the, the rotation of gear E, what is really causing that? So uh, gear E is supported by gear G. So now I can say phi E is phi G, but it's not exactly the same. I have to adjust by the rotation, by the, uh, the gear ratio, RG over RE. Pay attention here that it's not RE over RG. Um, so that's that's referred to the other videos that I posted about the tr twisting angle and deformation uh, 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 analysis using the uh, gear issues. So now it's the question now to uh, what's phi G? So phi G related to the fixed point that we have, which is D. So phi G D 
times RG over RE. That's the deformation or twisting that happens at B. You see now we're kind of relating, moving through that system. We started from B to E, and now we are at G. And G is the phi GD. Phi GD, if we look at uh, the segments that we had before in the diagram, uh, phi GD would equal the twisting that happens in the segment GH, and then the twisting that happens in segment HD, and they have different values because there are different internal torques uh, in each one. So if we look at the diagram, this is the same diagram we did before, uh, and uh, we can see from there that uh, phi uh, HD happen in this segment because of the torque of 20, uh, that's we figure out from the diagram and phi gh is also happening because of the torque at thd that we figure out to be uh, 60. So uh, let's start with figuring out phi gd using that formula that we have tl over jg but now over two segments. Um, you can see here that j and g are the same for the two segments because it's the same diameter and the same material uh, a36 steel. Uh, so plugging in the values, so TGH is negative 60, and the important thing here is to plug in the values of the torques correctly uh, with the correct signs from the uh, torque uh, diagram. So 60 is negative 60, 20, positive 20. Uh, L here is, uh, is in, in, uh, in inches, so I have to adjust my units of the torque from pound feet to be pound inch. So I, this is why I'm multiplying by 12 feet per inch. J, uh, my diameter here is one inch, so the radius is 0.5, uh, using the J formula for solid uh, section, uh, circular section. And then uh, G here is uh, in pound inch units. So if you calculate phi GD, it will be uh, negative uh, 0.0178 radians. Now what does this negative mean? It follows the same sign convention that and, and rule that we use to draw uh, the internal torque diagram. So positive means it's counterclockwise. Negative means it's clockwise. So point uh, or the gear G is rotating by this amount clockwise. Now what is, so I figure out phi G D. Now plug in phi G D into the formula for phi B to figure it out to figure out the value for phi b. But one thing I have to adjust for here, and account for, is that the rotation that happens in g, the gear g, uh, gear e is also rotating because of that, but it's in the opposite direction. So the gears kind of rotate. You see this is in one direction. This one is rotating, but in the other direction. Uh, so again, if, if this one is rotating this way, this one, the other one is rotating the opposite way. They meet at the same point, but the rotation here happens opposite to each other. So I will adjust for the sign of Phoebe. I will kind of force it. So I'll put a negative sign here. So negative and negative, that makes it positive. So positive based on my direction that I've sh I shown here uh, to the left, uh, it's a counterclockwise. So Phoebe will be counterclockwise of this value here. Uh, ne uh, 0.0267 and because of the uh, less uh, uh, the smaller radius of gear E relative to gear G whatever rotation that happened at G will be more uh, than uh, when it happens or the rotation that happens to gear uh, E so that's that's it finally uh it's a little long problem it's a it's a very challenging problem i know but if you really understand the steps here you can do any problem related to analyzing deformations and transmission system always remember you have to calculate the internal torque diagram so you know exactly what's the internal torque in every segment of every shaft in your system and the key thing or another thing is Try uh, to practice tracing the deformations that, deformations that happen uh, between two points uh, of, of the, on the shaft. If you want to calculate rotation of a point related to a fixed point into, in that system just before movement, 
uh, and trace the deformation from that point to the fixed point while considering the uh, shifting or you know moving between a shaft to a shaft through the gear ratio uh, of the gears connecting these two shafts. All right, so um, have fun with this problem. Rewind and go back to, I know it's a lot to absorb, but it's really important and a comprehensive problem on analyzing transmission systems. Good luck, uh, have fun, and see you in other videos.